Hey Brainyard, how terrifying would it be to wake up during surgery? I mean, you'd be lying there on a cold metal table with a slew of doctors hovering around you, holding all manner of strange and intimidating tools, and they'd be operating on you. We bet that your face would look something like the guy in the board game operation. Surprise, shock, terror, and maybe a hint of curiosity? Well, lucky for you, Brainyard, we have all the facts on this rare occurrence. From how exactly doctors get you ready for surgery, to what techniques they use to put you under, to why some people wake up and others don't, and also what doctors do to ensure that this doesn't happen. We'll even talk about some real life stories from people who have had this happen to them. Don't worry, Brainyard, we have science on our side for this one. Just lie back, close your eyes, Put on the mask the doctors hand you and count back slowly from 100 and get ready to wake back up. We're gonna give it to you straight right off the bat. Waking up during a surgery does indeed happen. As you can imagine, it is a rare occurrence, but it is not unheard of for a patient that was put under to wake up or to not experience the pain diminishing effects of anesthesia. What exactly is anesthesia? Well, we're glad you asked, Brainyard. Let's break it down for you. Anesthesia is when doctors will give you medication so that they can perform a surgery without you feeling pain, or in some cases, without you being conscious. There are four types of anesthesia that can be administered, and which one you'll get depends on the type of surgery and also what your doctor recommends for you based on your medical history. These four types are general, monitored, local, and regional. General anesthesia is what we most commonly think of when someone is put under. Patients are given a combination of medications via a mask or an IV and are put into what is essentially a medically induced coma. In this state, your muscles will be paralyzed and this includes your diaphragm, so a ventilator is used to help you breathe. Your vital signs will be monitored closely by a medical professional. And when the surgery is over, you will be administered different medications that will wake you back up. General anesthesia is not used for every surgery. In fact, it is saved solely for the really serious stuff. And this is because it is the strongest type of anesthetic out there. It will only be used for surgeries that are either extremely long or extremely painful, like knee replacement and heart or brain surgery. Monitored anesthesia is sort of like general anesthesia light because this method renders you in a sort of hazy, almost awake but not quite, but really you're almost asleep state. You won't be paralyzed for this one and it will wear off in about 10 minutes after ceasing administration. Monitored is used for cataract surgery or a colonoscopy. You know, it's serious stuff, but not as serious as someone working on, oh, I don't know, your brain. Which brings us to the final two anesthetics, which only work on parts of the body. You'll be fully conscious and aware during these procedures, but wait, don't freak out. You won't be able to feel the areas that the medication is targeting. Regional anesthesia is exactly what it sounds like. Only a region of your body is affected. You receive the medication through an IV or a catheter, and it will target your nerves. This means that the numbness will occur below the injection site. Childbirth or surgery on your limbs are the perfect time for regional anesthesia to be used. Finally, there's local anesthesia. You'll be completely awake for this one. A cream or a spray will be applied and it will cause the targeted area to go completely numb. Perfect for minor surgeries like filling a cavity. As you can imagine, depending on the type of anesthetic, as well as the seriousness of the surgery, there can be quite a few side effects. They can be as little as soreness, nausea, or vomiting, to more serious side effects like low blood pressure, difficulty urinating, nerve damage, long-term memory loss, or difficulty breathing. But what about waking up during surgery? What's the deal with this phenomenon? Why does it happen? How often does it happen? And can I get my money back from the hospital? Brainyard, calm down. We're going to the facts for this one. Here's what you need to know. 
Stats-wise, this is an extremely rare occurrence. In the US, only about one or two in every thousand patients will experience what is known as anesthesia awareness, which is when you will be in some state of consciousness when you aren't supposed to be, or sometimes a full-on waking up during a surgery. Another study which surveyed three million patients who had undergone general anesthesia in the United Kingdom and Ireland found that only one in 19,600 would wake up during a surgery. So, yeah, this is rare. But Brainiard, we know you, you're a man of science. You want to know the whys behind this anesthesia awareness thing. What is going on that would cause someone to wake up before they are supposed to? Well, studies have shown that when one or more of the medications administered to put someone under has been used in an insufficient amount, then someone can absolutely wake up either partially or all the way. Here's the thing, some surgeries that require lower doses of anesthesia are the ones that seem to have this phenomenon happen more than others. Surgeries like a C-section are a prime candidate for the dosage to be too low because doctors want to make sure that they aren't harming the baby. But during something like an emergency trauma surgery, doctors are also wary to give too much medication to someone because they don't want to accidentally make the situation worse. This is another time when people may not be given enough anesthetics to lose consciousness. Here's the real kicker though. Surgeries where paralytics are used, in other words, surgeries where you're medically paralyzed, can be a real problem for doctors because if a patient is conscious, they'll have no way to say to the doctor something like, oh, I don't know, hey, I'm still awake over here. This is why doctors will have brain monitors on you during surgery, because if they see your brain's activity above a certain threshold, they'll know something is up. It's not foolproof, but it does work. But alas, sometimes these things just can't be avoided. And even if all the proper precautions are taken before and during surgery, people can still wake up and find themselves in a particularly uncomfortable position, which is exactly what happened to Donna Penner. Donna was experiencing extreme abdominal pain, so she did what any reasonable person would do and went to her local hospital. Doctors decided Donna should have an immediate surgery and took her to the OR, and she was informed that she would be put under during the procedure. After a doctor administered a mask and told her to breathe deeply, Donna was out for about 10 minutes. She woke up fully paralyzed, but aware of her surroundings and able to feel everything that was going on. And it was indeed still going on. Her surgery lasted 90 minutes, which Donna described as absolutely horrific. But Donna took this experience and turned it into something good. She now gives lectures to medical students about anesthesia awareness, so they know the seriousness of the situation, and to also always be on the lookout for signs that their patient could still be conscious. And as for getting her money back, well, Donna sued the hospital, and six years later, she won her lawsuit. And with good reason too. She later said that the doctors were very dismissive of her experience, to the point where she felt like she was nothing to them. June Carson is another case of anesthesia awareness. After experiencing cardiac arrest, she lay on the operating table waiting to drift into an unconscious state. But it never happened. June lay on the operating table, paralyzed from medication as her surgery took place. And after 15 minutes, her heart stopped. The doctors administered an adrenaline shot, which saved her life. After this, she woke up about two hours later and remembered the entire event. It's scary stuff, Brainyard, but all hope is not lost. Donna's efforts have not been in vain, and doctors are very aware that this can happen, and now more than ever believe patients when they say awareness has occurred. Having an open dialogue about this subject is truly one of the best things you can do before going under for your surgery. So don't be shy about having a conversation with your doctor. Ask them if they will always have someone monitoring you to make sure that everything is going smoothly during the operation. If a patient says they have experienced some form of anesthesia awareness, medical professionals will help the patient get the treatment they need to make sure they don't endure psychological trauma from the experience. PTSD is not uncommon in these scenarios, and one of the best lines of defense against it is talking to a professional. As for what else can we do to keep this from happening? Well, professionals think that using nerve stimulators could be the next step for the prevention of anesthesia awareness. They would ensure that only the minimum amount of paralytic is administered, 
and thus patients would have the ability to move if they started to wake up. Education on the topic is also incredibly important. So, hey, watching a video like this is the first step. Turns out, patients who were told about awareness before they went into their surgery were not as horrified if they experienced it. Here's the thing, in some cases, it may be unavoidable, but knowledge is power, and knowing what any potential outcomes of your surgery are, even something like waking up in the middle of it, can prepare you for the worst. Well, that's all the ifs, ands, and buts of anesthesia awareness. It is an extremely rare occurrence, but it does happen. Talking to your doctor beforehand, making sure that someone will monitor your vitals every moment that you are under, and discussing with a medical professional what the best anesthetic is for you are all ways to make sure that this doesn't happen the next time you go in for a major surgery. Luckily, even in cases like Donna Penner, the surgery was still a success, and she is alive and well to tell others her story, and also to warn a new generation of doctors to keep an extra close eye on their patients. So don't worry, Brainyard. The doctor's got your back. You'll be feeling your best brainy self again in no time. We'll see you on the other side.